My country, Sierra Leone, always ranks last among the picture of women in this world who die during pregnancy. And this was always a source of embarrassment and despair to me, especially going through public health school abroad. And I thought to myself, when I get to work in Sierra Leone, I was, I was going to change this picture, whatever it takes. I didn't think it was easy, but then I thought pregnancy is not a disease that women should die needlessly, and that if every effort was put, at least in my own little way, then definitely we will see a change in the picture. Little did I know that the journey that I was about to undertake will take me from the maternity ward to the burial ground when Ebola struck my country. It started 10 years ago in a little hospital in the north of the country called Kabbalah. One sunny afternoon, a lady was brought in a stretcher. She was pregnant. She had been in labor for four days. And for the last two, they had been working with her, traveling with her because of the terrible seasonal roads. And so when she, she was visibly in distress, she was taken straight to the, the, the maternity wing. And we started preparing for, to have surgery. And I was called to come and observe what was happening to her. As I entered the room, I saw this lady lying. She had a gray t uh, oversized t-shirt and brown wrapper, and she was visibly dead. This lady was pregnant, and she was cold lying. So I went closer and looked at her, and I jolted. And all of my staff turned. They asked me, what is it? But I couldn't, I couldn't talk, because this lady lying there looked so fair, and she resembled so much my sister. And when I looked at the name, she had the same name as my sister. I thought even it was my sister. I couldn't say anything because I started to feel a lump in my throat. I couldn't swallow. And as the tears started to well in my eyes, I fought hard to control them and walked out of this room. And then I thought something actually needed to be done if my sisters like Aminata should be saved in this country. So I immediately called a meeting of all my staff and of course the local health uh, workers uh, in, the, in the town. And we came together and prepared a strategic plan of action to see that this needless dying of women should stop in this hospital and in this town once and for all. Say, what should we do? So what we did was, um, we did this strategic plan and within it we had one, we say, we organize uh, uh, bath waiting homes. Close, these are homes very close to the facility where women coming from afar could stay for a few weeks before delivery. We also organized uh, savings and loan schemes, these informal savings where women in a, in a particular area could save money and then give loans to uh, women like Aminata who were um, uh, in, in a health distress, to, in a health crisis, to help them and give them some empowerment as they go for treatment. Also, we went about going, um, uh, giving now free caesarean sections, free surgical operations, including caesarean sections, uh, uh, to all women who came to this uh, facility. In fact, we started to see the successes as the optic of services improved. We got, previously, we had something like 30% optic of services. This instantly uh, went up to about 70%. But of course, with this also meant that I did a lot of cesarean sections. In fact, 10 times more cesarean sections I did than I was doing before. Among, amidst all the odds, amidst all the odds, I was doing so many cesarean sections now, and uh, uh, with very few equipment, but then it was possible we were able to save a lot of lives. I even had to give up all my social activities because I thought um, uh, this was so important and it was as if my very life depended on it. I needed to do this. And so here we were jubilating over the successes that we saw now because within a couple of years, uh, the, the comparison of all of the district proved that this district where I was working had moved from 13th position to third position. This attracted the attention of my, of my superiors. 
and I was promoted. I was now uh, called to Freetown to become the director of Free Productive and Child Health, charged with the responsibility of translating, of replicating exactly what I had done in this district to the rest of the country. This was very big, but I knew some will, I knew will succeed. I knew something could be done and will succeed. So what we did then immediately was to introduce a free health care for pregnant women, lactating mothers, and children under five. What this meant was that this uh, group of people came to all of our facilities and they had free treatment. And so we, with this, we, we, we gave in a lot of um, uh, equipment to the facilities, all of the facilities, put in a lot of drugs, and even increased the salaries of health staff so that they became motivated. And we saw a similar picture as we had already seen in the district where I worked before. Optic of services improved. It's, it's doubled from 30 to about 65%. And then we even saw the, the uh, 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 incidence of women dying. It's moved from one in every eight women that were dying in our country to one in 21. This was a big achievement, of course. We are celebrating this success, and this success, and in fact, we thought uh, if we could just sustain this effort, we'll just about meet the Millennium Development Goals, which was supposed to be in 2015. And then Ebola struck. When Ebola struck, Everything that we had worked for just evaporated immediately. As we saw uptake of services just plummet down, all of the indicators, everything, everything just went down because our staff were afraid of touching patients now because the type of Ebola that we had was not the typical where there was bleeding or whatever. This type, with this type of Ebola, it, it mimicked every type of disease that we have in West Africa. So you didn't know who had Ebola or not. You cannot blame the staff because we lost 220 of our nurses and 11 doctors. And for 10 of these doctors that we lost, they were not working in typical Ebola facilities, but they were seeing normal patients when they contracted the disease. So our staff got frightened. Our staff got frightened and things came to a, to, to, to a height one day when I was called and told that in one leading hospital in Freetown there, a woman came to deliver and none of the staff could touch her, so she delivered her baby on the floor. Situation was now critical. And as head of reproductive and child health, they were all now, the staff and every other uh, 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 people were now looking up to me for direction. They were looking as to which direction to take. It was really difficult. So I thought to myself, I said, if Ebola is the cause of these problems, then, and we need to see how to address it. Then what I should do is I should go where Ebola is, where it is raging, and see I will probably get a solution from there. And so I decided to travel to the east, far east of the country, to Kailong, where the Ebola started. And then I had worked there before because I was responsible for the restoration of um, health care delivery service in this same district after the 11 years of war. So I knew most of the local leaders, and I went straight to a, dist a, a, a chiefdom where they had about the highest cases of, um, of Ebola. So I met the local chief there, Chief Musa Kalon. He was a man who, whenever he saw me, he was so full of laughter, he was so jovial and everything. But when I met this man, he was not the same man at all. He seemed so broken down. He seemed so deflated. The man sitting there was not the same man I used to know. But the reason being, almost every, every uh, 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 household in this town had lost somebody to Ebola. This chief lost also his wife and his daughter to Ebola. So everybody, and even some other, in some other villages around, whole villages were wiped out because of Ebola. So this chief was sitting there, not knowing what to do. Then I, I asked him, I said, chief, tell me, what is it that you think is responsible for so much of this death? Traditional uh, way of uh, doing the dead, the washing, the dressing and all, by the time they go to bury, what will happen is that all of the people who participated in that ceremony, all of them will get infected and they will go back to their, to their families and infect their families. And this was why the disease was raging so much. So I said, Chief, but what about if we as health people should do the burials uh, the, for you, 
all of the burials, I mean, not just the ones that died of Ebola, we'll do all of the burials for you. What is it that will happen? How will it disturb your tradition? Well, he says, well, we need to know where the people are buried. We need to take part. We need to be present. Then I said, okay, fine. This could be done. What we will do now, we will have you, some of your, your, your community members could be trained with our burial team, and we will have you stand close by, say your prayers, and then we take the cops to wherever you want, and then we bury. The only thing is that those that are going to join us will be dressed as we also are dressing up so that they don't go to do any touching of the cops. The chief agreed, and then we found a middle ground. And when this happened, we saw that uh, things were now under control. I went to one or two other towns and introduced the same thing. And it went well, and I went straight to headquarters to my superiors. I told them, I said, you know what, we should not concentrate only on those who have died of Ebola in the Ebola treatment centers. If we are to stop, uh, are to halt the Ebola here, what we need to do is to collect all of the corpses from all of the, the from the entire country and do these safe medical burials. I said that is the only way that we will be able to overcome this. And then my superior said, "You know what? We are going to give you a new designation. As from today, you are now the chief burial officer responsible for the coordination <laughs> of all burials." So this was how I came from Director of Reproductive and Child Health to Chief Burial Officer within the, the period of Ebola. Going from town to town, teaching people how to bury. But really, it was really scary because when I come home, I didn't know whether I was already infected. Because with Ebola, you cannot be too sure. I didn't know whether I had already got infected or not. So what I did was to send my family away for the longest period we've ever stayed apart. Send them away because I couldn't stand them hugging me at home for me not to... Get, if I was getting infected, let it be myself alone, but not with my family. So I had to stay alone, alone in my house and doing all of this job. So when I saw the stabilization of the infection, I thought, well, the reason why I went there, I shouldn't forget, I went there to take care of the dead, but I must come back to the living. I must come back to take care of the women, because people were waiting for me to give them um, a direction. I said, look, we could do one thing now. What about if we could collect all of the uh, uh, pregnant women, any pregnant woman that comes to the facility, we assume that she, the pregnant woman is, Ebola, is, is an Ebola case until proved otherwise. So we can also be done in the same gear that we done when we treat Ebola patients, and in that way the staff could protect themselves and they will not get Ebola. We trained the staff in that, and they were so happy, they went back to work. They, 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 they started going back to work, and the confidence returned. And so with this... As the confidence returned, we thought we should just go back to, the, the, to, to normal, start working as normal as possible. We spent a lot of energy um, uh, getting Ebola down and, and getting the maternal mortality picture under control. We should not relent now. We should continue with the effort. So as it is, a lot of effort was put into getting Ebola down uh, with all of our partners. We worked together to put, to put Ebola down, and I'm pretty sure that if we should take the same energy that we use to get Ebola down and direct it now to maternal mortality so that the likes of Aminatas that are there will not die needlessly anymore. This same energy that we have used to bring down Ebola, if we can use it to, to challenge, to, 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 to focus on those other challenges that are in West Africa that continue to plague people. We have HIV, we have tuberculosis, there are a lot of them there. We have seen that we are able to defeat Ebola, I'm sure that we will be able to defeat these other um, conditions, God willing. I want to thank you very much. Thank you.